My name is Leo Rosenthal. I'm a fisheries management biologist in Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. All trout are protected in Montana. The density of our fish up here is not the same as other trout populations throughout the state. We're actually doing the biologist field work and helping them maintain data so that we can start making better decisions uh, about the bull trout. You get a catch card where you, know, you record the location and the size. We're all jazzed just to go get on a new piece of river. Um, this is 100% virgin water to me and everybody else down here. This is one of the few places where you can actually target them. They were listed in 1998 as threatened under the Endangered Species Act. Places like the Missouri River, where we routinely have three to 5,000 catchable fish per mile. Our streams up here have three to 500 catchable trout per mile. And these are cutthroat trout that I'm talking about. We're all in it together. Like no one has the knowledge. We're not leaning on any one person to make decisions about where or when we go somewhere. We're kind of coming in on the back end the, the downslope of the migration period where they migrate up. There's a lot of positive energy around the group right now, so I think um, I think that we'll do all right. We, I think we'll get them. We know how many people are out there fishing for these fish and how many fish are being caught and released. We can put that into the context of how things are going with the population as a whole. We're tearing down camp right here, and then we're gonna go up river. We're gonna put in, we're gonna start catching some bull trout, hopefully. It's all an adventure. It's all in a day's work. Yeah, it's all in a day's work. But luckily we got Scott, the mighty camper. It's a little bit of pressure overnight. No biggie. That's what we make pumps for. Ready? I'll move this truck and then I guess Nick can just pull up over there into that grass. Yeah, and right on the side there. We'll get rolling. I knew that the put in was a little difficult. I didn't know that it would be as difficult. I guess to sum it up, it would be man, I hope this works. You got, you got it. I think the launch was a little unexpected. We didn't scout the night before, so we didn't really know what we were gonna get into. Good thing Scott's there, because he's good motivation. Because I think without Scott, we would have tried to look for something else. Not just us against the fish, but us against us, and you know, us against the mountain. Come on. You know, difficulty arriving at a place, it adds to the overall value of the experience. And so time is 10. We got up at 5.30. Feel working so to get everything down to the river. We've been rehydrating and uh, getting rods rigged. Uh, I don't know, Jay's got like nine, nine rods laying around my raft right now. So we'll see which one works. And uh, Noah's chomping at the bit. So yeah. I think uh, we'll get the cooler strap down and shove off. Best case scenario, we catch a 30 plus inch bull trout. Right? Yeah. Nick, how are you feeling? Feeling good. Feeling ready. Ready to catch a bull trout. At least watch Pacheco. Hang the beer bags. So this spot looks good. It's like back heavy. Um, not yet. Maybe before we get 
too close to this pool on the right side. <laughs> Look at this tiny one. See him? <laughs> Dude, get away. <laughs> yeah, underneath this one right here. some lunch, replenish in some of those calories from this morning, and uh, just gonna keep drifting and casting. Not all you can do, right? Dude, this is always a win. I've not been disappointed by these meals. Had three fish, all three ate. The last one bit my wiggly tail off. One of them looked more like a bull than anything. But. We only got five or six miles to go today, so just having a bite, debating, uh, fly selection. We've, everybody's had a couple follows, some lookers, nothing, no takers. I got one. What is it? What is it? It's a bull. Going into this trip, um, I wasn't too sure how it was going to pan out. I, we knew that the migration was on the back end and it was it was winding down and we figured there'd be a couple stragglers. We got a bull, dude. We were all super stoked about it just because we, we knew it solidified the fact that we knew what we were doing, we were in the right place, we were using the right gear. A little bull trout came and hammered this big game changer. So cool. That's a good sign for the trip. Got to fill out some information, date, um, the length of the fish, uh, and some other information. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that, and then we're going to keep rolling. It sort of ended the mystique, and it, it told us, yes, OK, they are here. I think especially being on our first day, that played a part in boosting spirits and uh, you know keeping the keeping the dream alive, as it were. Let's go another. This thing. whole bend looks nice, though. But man, we we pulled up on this pool and this fish came out of the water. That was a big bowl. That was a big bowl. Yeah, that was. A I'm guessing he was down there sharking around eating small bait fish. Now how do we get him to eat is the question. Yeah, I could try that game changer again. It was probably 10 minutes later, he came up and ate again. Same one, huge. And for a second I thought he wasn't gonna eat. Every cast I was doing something different. I would strip fast, I would strip slow. I was trying everything and then... My voice, I was like, ho, ho, ho! <laughs> ho, ho, ho! 
try to get him on the reel, get him on the reel. Holy <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Nice job, man. Oh, definitely <laughs> worth the stop, right? Holy. <laughs> no. Way, dude. Scott was clutch with the net, and uh, as soon as I saw the size of that fish, um, I was just stoked. I mean, that made the trip. I didn't have to catch another fish. Good job, man. That was that's awesome. That's... Dude, I needed that fish, man. Look at the leggy boy. stoked to see what see what was gonna happen the rest of the, the rest of the trip. So um, that fish pretty much made it a guarantee that I'm gonna go back next year. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get started until about 10.30 yesterday, so we're four hours ahead of that, basically, right now. And we're gonna slow roll until the, work the pockets, deep water, anything that looks uh, deep and cold. And then uh, hopefully our strategy pays off like it did yesterday. So just having a spot of breakfast. And then we're gonna get back at it. Quantity was not quite there. The fish were few and far between. Caught that first bull trout and we couldn't be happier. water too. I feel like you gotta grind for these these, these babies. Fine. All this hard work, all the, the tie the, you know the flies that I tied, all the rowing and the you know the 0.24 mile put in, <laughs> it was all worth it in that moment. Stay at it. Everybody's saying purple haze so half roll cast into this this fast rapid water let's see what he's got I got lazy with where to cast and how to cast throwing that big a fly and that big a rod just puts a wear on you nuts look at that game changer baby it all comes together and makes it all worth it whenever you catch a fish like that. It's 11 o'clock, it's 11 03. Shoulder's gonna get sore and tired and keep throwing. Every time you go somewhere, you think, why did it take me so long to get here? Well. A lot of places like this, and we can't get to them all, so uh, it's just really nice when we do get to these places. Yeah, good times all around.
Nice, dude. It's batty. To be doing it in a place that's difficult to get to and doesn't see many visitors because of that, awesome. I think just adds to the you know emotional magnitude of the experience. Sick. Go find another one. Uh, it's just awesome. I mean, I could row through that for the rest of my life. You know, I didn't have to fish it. I could just look at it and row it for the rest of my life. So. Okay. Let's go. So these fish are our largest native uh, native predator that we have. They're the great game fish. We're doing everything we can to to try and recover them and hopefully have other fisheries in the future. The thing that we kind of preach the most, and it seems to be something that's catching on throughout the fly fishing world in general, is this keep it wet campaign. That was the first time any, the four of us ever hung out. Um, first time we ever fished together. And it was just good vibes the whole time. Um, there was no pressure. We were literally just having fun fishing together, um, kind of uh, leapfrogging down the river. And we were all after the same thing. The same goal was hopefully catch a bull trout. Um, but at the end of the day, we were just we were just hoping to have a good a good trip. And I think we did that. Cheers. Cheers. Well, just a couple half inches to keep it from flopping yeah. around. Here, let me get it uh, straight. speaks to the work of Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks and the Forest Service to be able to monitor this fish population for people to be able to go out and enjoy.